Hi, this is Christopher Sperry, and this is the iTech Year Weekly, episode number 66. Execute episode 66. Recorded live Sunday, November 5th, 2023, live from iTech Year Central. As I said, I'm Christopher Sperry, editor in chief over at iTechYear.org, and joining us today back from the workplaces and ways and places beyond, former contributing editor over at Gear Diary. Uh, and pocket now, Mr. Chris Cavula. How are you, sir? I'm good and glad to be off the road again. It's a very, very good thank, thank you, Willie. We really did. Oh, thank you, guys. Yes, yes, we did. Oh, yes. Glad to be back. It wasn't nearly as salty or snarky. So, well, you know, that's that. You know, that's what I bring to the table. What can I tell you? <laughs> that's the way we do like our snark. We like it salty. So, we like our snark, and we like it snark. So, yes. You're right. Very good. <laughs> Also joining us this week, former contributing writer over at Gear Diary and currently the host of the Linux Link Tech Show and living in the Retro Arcade podcast, Brother Joe McLaughlin. How are you, sir? I am doing well. And yeah, I actually put out a living in the Retro Arcade today. All a review on the, there is a documentary that if you have YouTube Premium, I don't know if it's free, if you're free. um, Okay. But it's called Insert Coin. It's all about William Slash Midway from 1988. Oh, Valley Midway, yeah. Yeah, 1988, starting with the NARC video game, all the way through the Mortal Kombats, all the way up to when Midway canned the coin-op division in 2001. So um, it's it's a good good, uh, uh, documentary. And mm-hmm. you can watch, uh, listen to my full review. Nice, which isn't that long. Cool. But... <laughs> nice. So there you go. Yes, sir. And last but certainly never ever least, the former co-owner of Wugnet Publications, the Windows Users Group Network, Doctor Mister Larry McJunkin. How are you, sir? I am just. Fine. Spent most of my weekend moving back to Google Home from my uh, for my total smart home. Uh, gave HomeKit a couple of years, but two things are patently clear: Apple has very little interest in making HomeKit what it needs to be, and secondly, Siri needs to go back and finish college if she's going to catch up with the Google Assistant. Yeah. Period. That's 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 true. I'm it's, sorry, but that's un- the truth. You no, know, it's unfortunate because I know that there were. <clears throat> You and I talked about you moving from yep. um, from Google Home over to uh, HomeKit. Yep, uh, I tried this, it. And it was a big deal. Years. And it was a big deal for it's you. It's a big too. move. You got to go buy a whole bunch of HomePods, minis, and one yep. big HomePod, which yep. I wasted money on all of them. So, oh, well. oh, don't you. use any of that stuff. So, I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let's That's talk what about next the door is for to sell it all. Let's tell. Let's talk about the home pods. Maybe we can make a trade or something. All right. There you go. Yeah, we can. I got, they're brand new. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. All, All right. right. Uh, and speaking speaking of brand new stuff, the Apple announcement was last week, and it was actually on on that Monday evening <laughs> after our last show. The uh, scary, episodes. the scary event. <laughs> yes, scary right. event. Yes, and it actually wasn't that scary. Um, no. they announced a lot or at least a little bit less than what we originally thought they were going to announce. Um, it turns out that they really only announced, uh, new computers. They didn't hit the accessories at all. So what oh. they did do was the new 24 inch iMac. All right. With an M three series processor. All right, so the three nanometer processor, um, and uh, it starts out at twelve ninety nine. All right, so um, not not a not a bad little not a bad little deal for an all in one. Although to be honest, even though they've got a wonderful rainbow uh, selection of colors, I do not know a. Um, uh, how much longer the the iMac is going to last, which I think is the uh, bigger question here. All right, mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, two or B, what uh, whether or not um, the colors are 
you're really going to be as happy as you think you're going to be with the color that you choose if you don't just choose plain old silver. But that's just me. Yeah. Um, I, I think people have always liked the odd colors in, in the IMAX. I mean, they, you know, I don't really know what the IMAX sales look like. You know, I don't think and Apple doesn't have a good release, handle on Apple Right. So none numbers. of us really have a good sense of, you know, do they sell lots of them? Do they only sell a few of them? Uh, but I think people have always, you know, the IMAX have always been kind of a, not always, but mostly been colorful right. over, over their history. And so mm -hmm. I, I think people like that. You know, I, the iMac is not a computer that I think if you're a tech guy and you're and you're, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, you're, you're a power user, that kind of thing. Yeah, you, you tend to stay toward the grays, the silvers, those, those kind of generic Absolutely. kind of things. That's but I think I think, you know, but to me, it seemed to me that the, you know, the iMac is what I'm putting in my teenage daughter's bedroom. She's probably going right. to want a pink one. Th that's you know, that kind true. of thing. So yeah. I think that, I think it's the audience. I don't know. I, I don't know for sure. I'm speculating to an extent. Well, no, I don't. I think it's more to speculation. Most people, even students, are going to gravitate toward a MacBook Pro if they need mm -hmm. it in their in their house. You know, on a big screen, they'll buy a big screen to go with it, whether that's, that's a three hundred dollar right. one or a two thousand uh, dollar Apple Studio display. It makes no difference. But right. yeah. I people, think uh, I don't think you. I I sold mine. I'm done. I'll never have another all in one iMac ever. Right. Never. Sure. I think K through 12 are probably a huge uh, group of yeah, I agree that's with ordering oh, them. the educational market. Yes, very, very probably very because big. look what when they when they had the iMac Pro, it was what black? Yes. You know, right. like, yeah. So so but but when they ever had and they and they they talk typically follow this. Look at the iPhone versus the iPhone Pros. The pros right. typically are more kind of staid colors. They're more they're, they're more subdued. Whereas the the the, the lower the lower the, the tier consumer based to have machines, the, right? They tend to have the brighter, <clears throat> the more selections, the brighter right. choices. They do. And I think the same thing's true with the iMac. I think they're just following the same model, right? Yeah, right. No, but with these particular machines, you have um, a couple of different choices. You either get an eight core uh, CPU with an eight core. GPU, 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of unified memory for $1,299. Or you get the eight core CPU with a 10 core GPU, 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of unified memory for $1,499. Or you get um, the same configuration, but with twice the storage or 512 gigabytes of uh, storage for sixteen ninety nine to start. Do you off. get sixteen gigs oh. with that third one? Um, nope. Really, you can't. Well, you know, my humble. Well, opinion, hold on, man. Let of, me see. You might be able to if you go through. Yeah, you can go all the way up to twenty. Yeah, but gig. Yeah, you but you, you don't get it uh, as default though. No, no. See, you do in not. my humble opinion, that is not a starting point computer for almost anybody anymore. And, and not anymore. But I, no. I do want to let's step aside for just a second before we go continue with the specs and some of these models that they released. I think it's important that we should that we tell everybody that the big announcement was that they released all the M3 chips, the M3, oh, the M3 true, 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 and true, the M3 true. Max. And, and they yeah. did it all in one session, which yes. is unusual. Usually they do the regular one and then you see the Max and the Pro later. Yeah. But uh, in this case, we had all of them announced. And that was kind of the big fundamental announcement that yes. they made in all this. That, and that then is, all these are products is, built on. So these products we're talking about now. Are all products built on uh, on that on the three uh, you know, nanometer process on the three new, the on the three, right. on the new chips? So I right. think that's important to know. And I think the big key takeaway with those is yes, you know they're on the three nanometer process, and that's exciting. But they cut the memory bandwidth in half. Yeah, yes, I was just right. about they to did. say right. So that's the odd thing. And but I think it's still not destroying performance or anything like that. I mean, the numbers still look really good. Right. Don't get me wrong. But the point I want to make is that. Those are the key takeaways from what the new technologies that they announced are. I, right. I agree. It's, I agree. It's early, also, it's early because very few of these machines right. have actually hit people's absolutely true yet. So we'll but, see what it looks like. But well, well, they, they are not available for purchase until right. eleven seven. So right. it's true. Uh, but but we have seen some benchmarks that show that mm. you know some of the M threes are faster than the M two pros. Okay, whatever. But what does you know, that I, speed by the average guy or girl who's well, using and, and, and Larry, that's, that's where I was going. And and what I've seen in, in early, I'll call them early reviews, if you want, if you want to call them mm. reviews at this point, right. is, is I think the people are saying the same thing. I think that the, the bloggers are saying the same thing. We're going well. You could just buy the low end, and you probably aren't going to notice any difference, especially if you're upping from up from an M1 Mac. You're going to see it's faster, and that's all you care about anyway. 
Right. Yeah, and that's what they were really comparing them to. Who was fixing to. gigs, quite frankly? Well, they well, were they... showing they were showing both. The Joel, they were showing both numbers on Correct. the screen. So they weren't like hiding the fact, and they would often say the M two numbers very quickly. But, but the point is, but you're right. The, but the, but let's face it, it's right. more impressive to come up from the M one numbers. And I think the thinking was yes. more people are going to be upgrading from M ones than from M M twos. I don't yeah. think they're expecting. All, so I think that's well, where that's they were true, targeting because they didn't have an M two to upgrade from right. in that model. Right. Right. And I think that I think that's their thinking is that they're trying to, uh, you know, call out what most people are going to be doing. But so they're I'll getting to the this, generation. Yeah. If you have an M2 Pro or the M2 Max, probably not really worth upgrading it. No, and I think that's what people are yeah. saying. Because yeah. I mean, no, it not really for is, the same it a, footprint anyway. But I think I think that that's been true all along. Even you know back with the Intel series stuff and and all that. I mean, you, generally you don't go from one to, to the next one up. You usually wait and skip a generation, right? You always go to the next one up beyond that. And so I think that's been typical. A two or three sometimes except for on the iphone but yeah <laughs> yeah well i i don't yeah. do every iphone i do every like every other one and some some people do every one you're right you know some people right. do but i think yeah. this i think this has been true with the max the max tend to you tend to hold on to max for a number of years you tell yeah. you don't get rid of it every year so i i'm not surprised that they were targeting the m1s because the m1s are getting to that point now it sounds it sounds strange to say because i you know we remember when they announced them right um way back when now it seems like but they're now the thing that you know the people are upgrading from some <laughs> some you know like yeah. I, I mine's a year old right now my m1 pro and i'm perfectly happy well with i have it. i have a first you gen m I'm, I'm one air so it's not a pro it's not a max there's there's nothing you know else going on there and i'm not quite ready to upgrade yet but you know if the right thing came along the right deal came along i'd consider it you know at this right. point but but so yeah i i think people like me are who they're targeting who are at that point where they might be starting to think about changing. So, and, and I think the other reason that for this thing being out now, I think we were all kind of surprised at this announcement coming when it came is that I think their numbers were very so, so on the max. And I think they're looking for a tiny little boost before the end of the year. You know, I think that's what it's all about. So yep. here you go. No, here, here we are. So what else, very what true. else did they have in the models, Chris, that you were talking about? Um, They also upgraded, uh, the MacBook Pros. All right. Mm -hmm. They went mm -hmm. ahead and they finally went uh decided that the 13 inch MacBook Pro yeah. uh shall go the way of the dodo. It's gone. And uh, so that means there's no more toolbar. No more touch bar. Yes. No more touch bar. And it's gone. It, yeah. And 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 everybody everybody cried no tears. <laughs> So, <laughs> so right. there's a lot of folks that were um, still wondering why that thing was kind of hanging around. Um, but that that's that's just me. Um, I you know, know I, I, over I know there's a few years, I know there's a few devotees of it that absolutely love it and think it's the best thing since sliced bread and are, are probably crying about it. But well, I, I would agree problem. that the vast majority of people are not. <laughs> no, right. I, I but, agree. But the very quick problem... true story. Uh, two days ago, actually three days ago, I went on a, on a first level support call to a lady who had a MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. It was a, one of the first that had the, the, the magic bar on it. And this long after, she says, oh, while you're here, what's this thing here for? <laughs> oh, Gee, honest to God, right. that's what she well, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they don't I, use I, it. That I and do I think not that was, doubt. I think that was the number one problem. That nobody actually leveraged it, so nobody knew what to do with it. Right. So, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Got it. I, <laughs> I agree. Um, I, I, I will tell you, though, um, now... Train derailed. Oh, bad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, there he goes. Tell yeah. Don't tell us. That's all right. So, so you're talking about myself. the different models and 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 what was in them and all that kind of thing. Well, what? No, no. It was a. It was a. I forget. If I remember what it was, I'll come back to it. But but um, uh, I know that that yes, all three of these are all all um all the models or all the chips were all released all at once. It did cut the bandwidth for the memory in half, which I don't <laughs> understand. Mm -mm. Um, but at least me neither. At this point, if you were to go with a 14 inch and you were go and you were gonna to go with the entry level, all right, you get the eight core 
G, uh, uh, CPU with the 10 core GPU, you get eight gigabytes of RAM and you get um, 512 gigabytes of storage all for $15.99, which okay. is not bad. All right. It no. is not for this, not for this line of computers. It's not bad. All right. Um, wasn't, this, isn't there a base? Isn't there a base? One of the things it wasn't announced during the actual front thing, but it came up afterwards that the 13 that went away mm -hmm. is replaced by a 14 that has base just right real and base that's, that's what i'm talking about that's, oh, what, that's, that's the one you're talking about that's one that i got I'm talking you. about yes I got oh, and, and, and and i do remember what i was going to say the the software for the touch bar all right was mm. was released once all right uh in the original version of that of of those models that that came with touch bars and they never were updated that software was never <laughs> updated after that um so to to keep that around in that form i mean i don't there 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 it's a very mixed market right there's a you get a dichotomy sure. of sort of opinions on on the touch bar and its usefulness i know that uh, there were a lot of folks that just turned on the function keys for that and left and let it go although i will say that that it was a bit gutsy at least in my my particular opinion to go ahead and introduce a soft escape key as part of that bar when there are so many people that per, that use that particular key um uh, and rely on it it would be much more reliable if it were a hardware based key as mm. opposed to a soft key for all the things that it that um, people escape from, if you will, or use. I just thought it was it was interesting to have what was it, I mean we you know refer to it as the touch bar, but really it was designed to make function keys more flexible, right? That was their right. purpose behind, right. behind the riddler, at least. Right. And to I thought it was options. very clever, right. and and I wanted to give Apple credit at the time to say, hey, you, you tried something new. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we all see that it landed with a big thud for for most people, but. It, it was an interesting notion. So, you know, right, right. kudos for trying something different. Yeah, mine stayed yeah. on function key the whole time I owned it. <laughs> I think, I I think it did for most people, Larry. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, I think when they when they released it, I think a lot of people thought they were going to go with the touchscreen Mac, which a lot of people still want a touchscreen Mac. Yeah, I don't but... know why. Really do. I don't know why. All right. Oh, yeah. oh, you mean a touch screen Mac? Touch screen Mac. I'm, I'm, I, I had touch yeah, yeah, yeah. I had touch bar stuck in my head. Yeah. Right. And this was a disappointment for the people that wanted a touch screen Mac. Right. I I um, so. I really don't don't think that that Apple will ever go to a full touch screen Mac Probably not. Pro. They if if you're wanting a uh, a um a touch screen based if if they uh, do computer, they will be tell on you to go with number the... 947. Well, it'll be based on the it'll be based on the iPad, not on the Mac. Right. And that's right. what they, they will tell you to what you what you want is an iPad and not a a MacBook, yeah. even though many people were already to saying that. no, right? Yeah, so, they already do. So, so, um, so, what else did they have out? I mean, they there was the, so right, right. There, there are MacBook three. Models. There are there are three um, models for each: the fourteen inch and the sixteen inch. You you've on the on the fourteen inch, um, you've got um, like I said, the the one with the eight core. Uh, CPU, 10 core GPU, the eight gigabytes of RAM, and then the 512 gigabytes of storage. And then you move up to the regular, again, 14 inch, uh, eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, still the eight gigabytes of RAM, but you go up to one terabyte of storage and that starts at uh, $17.99, all right? If you want um, the, the space black, all right, which I hear is really not a true black. It's more of a dark metallic gray as opposed to the space yeah. gray, right? But I heard it's better about fingerprints than the midnight blue was. The, it so. is not fingerprint proof. I've heard it described as fingerprint but, resistant, but yes. Better better, better than the blue ones right. is what I'm getting at. Right. right. Got but it. It's, it starts at uh, 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU. Wow. 18 gigabytes of unified memory and uh, 500 gigabytes of storage for 19.99. All right. Okay. Um, and that's now. Of course, you can customize customize all of those. But if oh, you yeah. want the black, you've got to go with at least so, 
an M3 Pro. Now on the 16 inch side, you get them either in space black or silver. All right. And there I think the no other thing in this, and I think the other thing in the in the 16 inches, there's no base M3. It's only no. the Pro and the Max. No, right. right. You've got just the Pro and the Max. Uh, on the low end, 16 inch, you've got 12 core, 18 core, 18 gigabytes of unified memory, and then the 512 uh, gigabyte SSD that starts at 24.99. All right. Uh, you uh, then the the mid range is still an M3 Pro. It's 12 core, 18 core again, 36 gigabytes of unified memory with mm. uh, 512 gigabytes of storage, and that starts at 28.99. All right. Okay. Uh, the big Mamu, the the M3 Max, comes with 14 core GPU, 30 or, or CPU, 30 core GPU. 36 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of storage. And that starts at $34.99. All right. Again, these are all um, available starting uh, on, what is it? Uh, Tuesday, the 7th. All right. Um, and I will tell you right now that all of the pros, the low end, the entry level uh, 16 inch pro is available starting November 21st to the 29th. Um, the mid range is um, November eighth to the tenth, so nobody nobody's wanting the mid range. It's either the low end or the high end. Yeah. The max. I know the max was the latest. I, I knew right. that. Um, I right. do find it interesting that you know, again, some of them start at eight gigabytes of RAM, and and as right. Larry kind of said, that's that's really not enough anymore. But what I find no, it, it interesting it really is the isn't. next the next jump on most of these is not to 16, which is what you would expect. It's 18. 18. And, that, right. and then the other jump is to 36, not 32. I find right. that kind of fascinating. I'm not They've sure what, changed the, what their the thinking sim set. is. They've changed their sim set. That's all it is. It's all it is. Okay. Yep. So then why isn't the base nine? <laughs> now that's a good I question. I, I can't I, answer I that. I don't know. Um I will tell you though that um when you go with the 16 inch, there's they've got some configuration locks that are set up. Sure. Uh, you can start with the 14 core, 16, uh, I'm sorry, 14 core, 30 core uh, GPU, 16 core neural engine. All right. And you can get that in 36 gigabytes or 96 gigabytes. Yeah. All right. Um, the 96 gigabytes will add $800 to the whole thing. All right, bringing wow. that to forty two ninety nine. And Chris, right. to answer that earlier question, probably because Apple never does anything on odd numbers. You'll think back; they True. rarely. Yeah, do. no. All right, except except there are some seven core. Uh, there were some seven core yeah, CPU some, GPUs out there. Yeah, like those, those, those were not on the air. air I thought uh, iPhone those, nine never existed. Those were the bin. Those, those, but those were, were the bin numbers, right? But there was an iPhone eleven, so you know. True. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. All right, and so you can seven. also go. You can also go <laughs> yeah. with the with um the uh, the sixteen inch, uh, sixteen core CPU, forty core GPU, sixteen core neural engine. All right, that starts at thirty nine ninety nine, but you get choices of either forty eight sixty four or one hundred and twenty eight gigabytes of unified memory. Now, Ooh. the, the to go that? from to go from forty eight to sixty four is two hundred <laughs> bucks. All right, to go to one hundred and twenty eight is a thousand dollars. All right. Oh, M G. Oh, chump, yeah. Just chump change. There you go. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh huh. Uh, you get choices of one, two, four, or eight terabytes of storage. Eight terabytes of storage will add a nice hefty twenty two hundred dollars to the to the. What price. do we max out at all this? That's where I'm going. Uh, I believe uh, yeah. that that if if you were to max out every choice here, um, you you get to a nice whopping. Very affordable, seventy one ninety nine. All right. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, there you go. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Um. So. So yeah. God, I was <laughs> when I was young. When I was younger, I bought a car for less than that. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. So so you know, I I will tell you that um. Uh, personally, if I were if I were to go this route, um. I'd probably uh, end up with with somewhere in the neighborhood of around forty four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. with, with the better chip, forty eight gigabytes of uh, unified memory, um, er. yeah, and then two yeah, my M two Pro will be on my desk for a few more. 
uh, yeah, that's, that's is exactly what I'm saying. So exactly yeah, you're, you're right. Saying. The M1 Max that I've got is is still more than enough for what I'm Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. And it and it 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 does you know pretty good, uh, for for what it does with um 64 gigabytes of RAM, and I believe the top rated M1 Max chip. So can't complain at all. Wow. Okay. Right. But yeah, that's 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 what they announced, and that's and that's all that they announced. None of the um, um, accessories that we thought were going to change changed at all. So there you go. No, and I think that's important to point out because the, the accessories we were all expecting to change were accessories that were, were today still uh, uh, based on a lightning connector, and we were kind of hoping they would come up with a USB C connector. Yep. Um, I think the problem, of course, is that we all agree. On the especially on the mouse, the connectors yeah. in a stupid, mm -hmm. stupid, stupid, stupid place, and I think just yep. changing that to USB C would have just been the reason to have a bunch of new memes out there. Yeah, I think that. So yeah. I think they just avoided yeah. that yeah. until they're able to redesign the silly thing. I can see that mouse on, uh, upside down with the cord in it, and then the 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 meme underneath it is it's dead, Jim. You know. So there you go. Right. <laughs> so I think they just avoided the whole thing one yeah. more layer. Yeah. And they'll there, probably just come out without an announcement. It's probably what'll happen. Agree. It'll be a press yeah. release or something like that. But but later. Anyway, so yeah. so that that was that was what was announced at the Apple okay. oh, cool. at the Apple um uh, event last uh Monday evening, starting at five o'clock I, I think the only other other interesting thing is that the 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 other story going around the 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 the, the chain, as it were, is that they shot the whole thing on an iPhone. Yeah, yep, they did. yeah, that's kind of and and for having it was a little well, bland, but had but for having been done on an iPhone, not too bad. Okay, I'll give them. Well, that. and here's the thing, though, there are some more details coming out about. Of that course, there are strictly with the iPhone. Well, I mean, for example, the how they've done with how, with rigging and stuff. You know, I, mean, I was going to say, and that would have yeah. been the case on the cinematographer too. You know, but right. you know what? But, but right. you know what? People running around putting the damn thing on a selfie stick. How is that any different? You know, you're still you're still on a you're still using rigging, as it were. Well, and so, others, I get that. And and you have and you had the you had the the drone shot. How would you do that you. if you didn't rig it up? Right. I mean, come on. So they might have shot with the iPhone with some special. I, but the and point why is, why would that, you fly an iPhone? That's my. Other thing. Uh, I, I'm there, but if but the but, point yeah. is, if that's but if that's the lenses they were using and that's the software they were using, it's still pretty pretty interesting pretty good. It, pretty good. it's nicely done right you know i'll give them credit no, I for agree. that i mean such I as agree. It is. For, for what they did you know and they they well they've they've there's a lot of they've done it before, uh, movies too. that are that are they have shot no. on on oh, um, tv lots plus of, lots of music videos for sure right absolutely true absolutely right. true so um, but, but and, again i'm not unhappy i think it was interesting no 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 it was it was it's actually very very well done and i didn't it shows i didn't watch it going product too. wow look at this it looks like it's not done on a phone i mean i didn't think that when i was watching it you know right i will say uh, this it it was far too long of an announcement for all it was, and I actually watched it in double speed on YouTube after the I, fact. You know, I've, I've seen a like, lot of people say that, Joel. I, I yeah. and I thought it was less than an hour. It wasn't that long no. to me, uh, but you know, but but, uh, but you're right. A lot of people are saying exactly what you're saying. You know, it's like, oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't think it was that long, but okay, right, <laughs> right, right. But um, I anyway. That's the Apple event. The one thing, though, that that um, they really did not um, announce at an earlier Apple event, nah. which is something that that has been uh, everybody's been betting on the come since 2015. Right. Um, one of the things that Apple has said that would come later in 2015 when they first announced Apple Watch, um, but has not happened yet um for a couple of different reasons and we'll get into those in a minute here um apple was supposed to come out um at launch with glucose monitoring now larry you were uh, but before you go there i think it's more fundamental than that the apple watch was fundamentally supposed to be a medical device and they were going to move right. forward with it as a medical well, device. Well, so it's well, not just about me just, let me just, uh, let's, 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 let's hang on with that. that there, there's yeah, some things here that I want to get into, but Larry, Larry, awesome. what do you know about this? Well, what I know about it is, is what it all boils down to is money and I'll get into that. 
Yeah. But the older yeah. I get, the more sensitive I personally become to health issues. It's just because when you get old, you have health issues. So, you know, I'm very sensitive to these things. Like, like even though I don't have diabetes, I'm very sensitive. Uh, and I know a lot of people who do have this disease. Right. And, and like Chris said, according to some, uh, there was a, according to a nine to five Mac, they had a few of their insiders who spoke with friends in Apple and assured them that the very first Apple Watch, Apple Watch was originally supposed to have launched with this feature. It did right. not. So it rather not. than try and help the sick back then, and I'm, I mean, I believe every bit of this I've read in now four different sources, like those who have diabetes, I think Apple focused its work on the worried well meaning those people who didn't have significant problems with their health, but they had a few anxieties about overweight or I should exercise more. So their interest was a health monitoring tool. So that's what they made the first Apple Watch to be. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but to me, this sounds like a really bad case of there's more money in our watch if we make it a health tool than if we make it something that monitors health issues, period. Well, so uh, there, there, there are, there are, there are a couple of things here. Your team here are a lot closer to this than me. So, what, what do you guys think here? So, so there, there are a couple of things here. Number one, Apple bought out, and I forget if, if one of you knows the name of the company that oh, they bought out and yeah, acquired. I don't. To, to help them with the glucose monitoring. All right, they acquired them in either 2013 or 2014. I think it was 2013. Oh, I get there were problems. All right, I'm... and they were, and this was supposed to. They were very close to cracking that non-invasive glucose glucose monitoring uh, nut. And um, Apple has has sort of quietly in the background kind of shelved it. All right, there are a couple of reasons for this. All right, number one. They did not want to, you know, uh, get into the health monitoring as opposed to um, or they wanted to get into health monitoring as opposed to being a, a regulated medical device. They they did not want to get in bed at all in any way, shape well, or form with the get FDA. All right. They, want. they did not want to get involved with the FDA or be subject to any kind of regulation. They did not have anybody over there that had any kind of a clue um, how to deal with the FDA in, from a software right. perspective or knew how to deal with all of the regulation from a software perspective. And while they, I know that they did look at it, they decided that since they didn't have anybody in-house that they could tap and say, hey, do you have a clue? Can you please monitor this for us? And I really don't think that they wanted to go outside uh, to to pull somebody into what would obviously be some level of VP position. Um, to well, they were trying to keep it pretty to, secretive at that point, you know. True to to pilot that. All right, and even though now the rabbit's out of the hat, they still haven't chased after that. So it's so, very clear yeah. at this point they're more worried or more concerned about or see a better business model in the worried well yeah. as opposed to I, the health monitoring. I, Even yeah. though there's I don't know how many different stories out there about their um, atrial fibrillation sensor. All right. And the Apple Watch saved my life because I got these notifications and then I went to the hospital. All right. So I, 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 I kind of disagree a little with something that Larry said in the sense that I don't think they did it because they thought they would make more money by servicing the worried, the worried well. I think that they actually would have probably made more money the other way. But the problem is the risk is higher as well. Once you get into that morass of government approvals, no, you could get stuck start. and never get out. Don't well, according start. to the insiders, though, that's what they did say, Chris. I was I, no, I read, yeah. I read what they said. Well, I no, no, I, mean, I read it in about three other sources too. Yeah, no, I get that. I get what they were saying. I just, I really think there's more to it. Is what I'm getting at. Well, there I, might I think well it's, be, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot that's, yeah. that's going on there, and of course, depending on who you talk to and where they, what they were actually doing at the time, and what part of the project they were in, there could be different, you know, uh, right. perspectives on all that. But, but I do think I, I so I think they thought that. All they could do, this would be the best way to get in. I think this was supposed to be the way in, right? This was how they got in without having to deal with all the nonsense overhead. I don't think this was the end goal. 
I don't think they said, we're going to service the worried well because it's going to be easier for us. I think they said, well, let's get in the door here while we're still working out these other problems. Probably no, true, that, way, you know, that way there was a, reven there was a revenue disagree. stream. No, I think they wanted a revenue stream while they were still working on the other stuff. No, Very true. I, but on the other hand, you've got different use cases for buying that true. watch. I, I might buy it because I need to monitor my heart. You might buy it for something else. True. Somebody, some 20 year olds buying it because they're riding a Peloton every day. I mean, yeah, right. that's the use case. And right. So I, don't, I don't know. That's right. Just... But I can tell you with as many people was any, every, you know, with the millions of people in, in the United States, as well as around the world. All right. Tens, if not hundreds of millions of people around the world with diabetes, if they were to come out, with the, the person that does that first, I don't care who it is, whether yeah. it is, you know, Google or some flavor of Fitbit or whether it is Apple Watch or whether no, it think, is, yeah. you know, some other Android Wear based manufacturer, I, oh, the you're company right. that comes out with the glucose monitoring but, that works. That but that's really the other works. side. But that's the other. But that's the other side of it. You're right. And I and I remember what you were saying. They did buy a company yep. uh, 2013, 2014 to try to help them with that problem. I just think that that was the other piece of the equation, that that was a tougher nut to crack than they thought. And again, I think they wanted a revenue stream while they were while they're trying to figure all that out. And and here we are many years down the road and you still hear that they're working on it. You you, you mentioned that they shelved it. I don't think they shelved anything. I just think it's been harder than they thought it would based be. On, and they're not based able on to get what there. I saw and based on what I read and my and my personal knowledge of regulated software, because I've done this. Oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. Right? I've done this. All right. Dealing with the FDA is a pain in the caboose. Uh, absolutely true. Right. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, working through all of working through the validation, the, 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 the FDA based validation, which is a hell of a lot more than just oh, yeah. product no, testing. Absolutely true. All right. But again, you know, we're talking about that, but they didn't even have the product is what I'm getting at. Well, they the, haven't the, even the developed point, the, the product point that yet. I'm making is they started down that road. All right. Got a full blown picture of what would be required and then stopped. I don't think they stopped, though. I think they no, stopped they, pursuing they the FDA stopped. thing. They're still developing. You're, they still have doctors on staff that are working on those things. I so I think they've got I think they've got uh, people an 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 background and a software Reason. background. They'll be able to say we, we're still working on it. I, so I they think they're doing a, enough work there. to be yeah, to be able to to say that they're still working on it. There was the an focus, announcement earlier this year. The focus of the device has completely changed. It is no longer they're not going to go down that that until until they get somebody on on staff that they can trust. All right, that knows and that they are confident that knows and understands the ins and outs of a dealing with the FDA and b making certain that their their testing which by the way has recently sucked ass pardon me for for the for the a word all right but it's true all right which has sucked but for the last i don't know how long um they are not they're not going to chase this all right it will be years before this happens until and, they and find I will, somebody but i will say there's these the other pilot. people that that quote unquote have these monitors out they're all crap none of them oh, are they're horrible good. They're horrible. They don't work. They don't work. So I mean, um, we so, all know that none, none of them work. I don't care what. No, any, that, these that's folks absolutely claim. right. No, uh, anything that's out there right now that they're saying, you know, can go ahead and do it without either scratching the skin and getting some level of um, uh, blood on their sensor. They are completely lying. All right. It still oh, requires. Absolutely. It still requires those those monitors that you see that you can stick on your arm, so, your leg, your hip, your your whatever. Um, they, but they, but what they do is project. they make a small nick, they make a small nick in your skin that is really, you know, it's very superficial. All right. But it's enough to draw a little bit of blood. And that's what that sensor but, constantly reads. But from. I, I, I do think you're totally wrong when you say that they, they put the whole thing on a shelf. They just got a new chief in charge of it in September. So no. I don't think it's on a shelf. I, I, I think hope they're I'm still wrong. doing it. I hope you're right and I hope I'm wrong. But you with know, the I amount just, of time, I just think I just think they're not I don't think they I don't think they dude they announced how this hard it was 10 that years ago. It doesn't mean doesn't mean they were able to get past the hurdles that maybe they thought they were going to and they didn't. <clears> I <throat> think they're still working it, but I think that it's harder than I they thought. I think that they are there's good reason to be afraid. 
All right. There's good reason to be oh, sure. afeard, afeard of the FDA. All oh, right? absolutely There's true. Very good absolutely reason. true. I know. I've dealt with them. All right. Well, you guys, you guys may remember even to put when they put the AFib monitoring into the watch. Do you remember the crap that was going on with that with the government saying, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they did that, there was a lot of grief. So you're right. You're absolutely right about right. that. And there, they backed of, off and they backed off their position and they backed off the censor mean too. Not, nah, I don't think that's the case. No, I, I'm they, not, no, that's not the impression I, I'm getting. I, I, they, they, they backed off the censor. They were making claims about the censor. All right. They were making claims about the censor. Meaning they, they may have made they, they may have backed off on their claims, but I don't think they backed off on developing on it. I think it's just not there. Let, let me. I think let they me, just haven't solved me, it. It's a it's a very it's a very subtle and very it, the way that the censor is now. If they the, if the claims that they were to to publish were to say that this is a this is a um, medical device grade censor, which I believe that it is. All right, then this is you know this is this is. Uh, they'd have to jump through all those FDA related hoops in order to be able to make those statements and have it be true as it stands. They can throw that sensor out there. All right. Without all of the claims and out all, and without all of the overhead and still have it be as accurate. And that's where I think that they are. But they um, haven't done that. And so what I'm telling you I is disagree. I think the technology, I think they haven't done that. And the reason they haven't done it is because they haven't cracked the nut yet. Uh, no, I know. I disagree. I disagree. All right. Then why don't they release this and just say, "Hey, it's not, it's not a matter." Because they don't sensor. have anybody in house that understands FDA based validation. Yeah, I'm not. I they don't have anybody I, I there you. that understands how to deal with and See, that's navigate a little different the FDA. Than, it's different than a, than a heart rate monitor or an oxygen sensor. Those yeah. things can be inaccurate. I mean, you can go buy a hundred of them on Amazon, either one, and none of them are going to read the same reading. Period. Well, Everyone and and, but, and I'll tell you what. What's important? I mean, even even those of us who have to prick our fingers in the morning, right, and and use mm -hmm. those sensors, those sensors can be off by as much as twenty. So the same thing there. Then they can be mm -hmm. widely off, and they and they're still considered okay. You know, huh. your number, your, your glucose reading can be way off and it's still considered OK. And anybody who's used these sensors, the the, 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 the mechanical, you know, poke your blood sensors knows I, you can take I two or two or three. And get nope, they are not. They are wow. not. It, 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 there's a ton of, of stories out there about how how accurate they can be. They can be off by quite a bit and uh, and still be considered legally good enough. So uh, but again. They're not considered a medical device per se. You don't have to have a prescription to get them. So, you know, they're they're over the counter at best. So it's a different a different level of support. So I, I, I that's why I say I think if Apple had a had a sensor that was even, you know, that good, they would have released it. I just don't think they have it yet. Hmm. Hard to say. Hard to say. Chris could be right. I could be right. Who knows? <laughs> who knows at this point who knows the the point being though is it's not it's, there yet it's That's not the there yet and it was going to be the 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 it was that that gonna cracks be this nut goes down that road with the fda and all of the validation um they are going to win the the smart watch war they will end of story yeah, if that's the case right. no i think end it's true. story Everything after that, I don't care who else gets it after that. But oh, the interesting right? thing is nobody else has done it yet either. So that's no. the interesting part of all this. No, no, I and I think it's partially because of the of the um, uh, issues with with. Um, there must be something difficult, really difficult. Well, the, that's the, what the I'm saying. The problem is I don't think that they can get an accurate reading with just sweat, and they've got to wait for the technology to come around to figure out, you know, to read not only the sweat underneath the watch. But also um, some level of something or other in the blood that that light will be able to read as sugar too high or sugar too low or sugar just right. So anyway, there's a lot here that's going hey, on. Thank there's you, Golden Locks. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's still there's still stuff here that they've got to go ahead and crack, and it's going to be a while. All right. Yeah, I think so. We've been waiting for about 10 years um, I have a feeling we're going to wait probably at least another five, if not I, more. I'm going to agree with you on that. I think right. I think they're right. At, at least another five, um, because the amount of testing that would have to go, they're, they're going to yeah. that thing's going to be in testing and in FDA based validation 
for probably about two years. Well, I think I think what again, whether it becomes a medical grade device or a consumer device, either way, they've got to go through. They can't make certain claims unless they can prove them. Right. So you're right. right. It's going to be testing no matter how you slice it up. Agree. So. Agree. So we'll see how it goes. But, and you know, there was another article out there on a completely uh uh, and speaking of password managers, I know for um, something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Larry, you, you, password managers have always been near and dear to your heart. I know that you've, you've got, a, uh, uh, some good relationships with some folks in that particular software business. Um, but there's, there's stuff that's out there right now that they're mm-hmm. recommending for your, both your iPhone and your Mac. That's true. And, uh, you know, at the risk of dating myself, I've been 42 years now in the technology game, which makes me both experienced and obviously old. So Mm -hmm. anyone anyone in this space for that long is going to tend to gravitate toward one or two little areas that interest them most. For me, this has been email clients. And then later on, when they evolve, password managers. I can Honestly, honestly say I have tried every single password manager app ever Agreed. developed for Windows and Mac. Some of them worked on, on Linux and command line interface. But fast forward, more importantly, to right now, and, and, and even before I read this article by Apple Insider, I would have named the exact same top three password managers for iOS and, and, and Mac in the very same order as they did. My only differing comment is that I would forget about number four and five, just focus on the top three, Uh, depending on your use case. And and I swear we need to subtitle this show, the use case show, because we do talk about it. True, But, you know, Chris Gavula said a long time ago, that's true. I mean, use case dictates everything. It does. Uh, The first password manager that Apple Insider mentioned was the Apple Keychain. And if there's anyone on the planet that I'm going to trust with the keys to my financial information, all $200 worth of it, it's Apple, really. And think about it. They built iOS. They built Mac OS. They built iPad OS. And in the past year, they have finally, finally upped their game in the password manager space so much with this, with the keychain password manager that now is completely on par with third-party apps with the exception of the extras, which a lot of folks don't need. I read use case here. So if all you need is password yeah. managers and that's it, just go with Apple Keychain. It's free. It's built into all your Apple OSs. It's built into Safari. It is just ubiquitous in the Apple ecosystem. So if you know if you're interested in an easy to use password manager, look no further. But if you need, you know, uh, secure nodes and it, you need it to store pictures of your COVID card and all that, then you need to go elsewhere. What if and, what if you also need to support like your Windows box or your Android box? That, well, you know, that, that used to be you had to go elsewhere. Now Apple has made the keychain as well as most everything else in iCloud available on Windows. The downside to that. Chris, as you probably have discovered, it's mm-hmm. not pretty. It just works. No. It's kind of there, but I don't want to use it there. Sure. So I, I think I would go with a third party if you're using on a on a, on a you know a daily basis more than one operating system. I use one password. Uh and and I'm I'll be honest, this thing is just it's the best there ever was and probably ever will be. I was fortunate enough to, it's one of the first ones too. I was fortunate enough to be on the first internal alpha of that app. Mm -hmm. It was called 1P about 18 years ago. It started out as a Mac only app. It's evolved into what I think, as I said, it's the best password manager out there. There's a version for every OS, including a command line interface. It's a beautiful UI. It has the best monetarily. It has the best family plan of all password managers. Agree. An individual subscription is 39 bucks, which now is kind of on the low end. A couple of the uh, other players, because they're losing money, have increased their price and, and they're mm. even more. The family subscription is like 59 bucks for five or six people, I forget. But it's well, well worth it. But but lastly, the third option they listed, and, and I, I have this as well, but 
I get that sometimes, you know, you want the best thing for the zero dollar point, and that's Bitwarden. This is one of the best open source apps you will ever use in your life. I can't count the number of independent developers that contribute to the success of this product. They, they it's a, you know, being an open source app, everybody can look at the code, everybody can validate it, everybody can add to it, they can submit features, may not be taken, but they can work on it. So even though it's free, it's not feature limited in any single way. It is a full fledged app. The only thing that you can add for a mere 10 bucks a year, if you want, you can add TOTP or temporary one-time passwords to it, which, you know, for some people is useful for us, of course, but a lot of people, they don't care. Uh, at the end of the day, folks, though, the best password manager out there is the one you are using and you really should be using something, period. Well, well, the one Question. that you're using you. and the one that you're using consistently Right. And, yeah. and without yes, fail. It's something, but and the, without the fail. All right. Um until I mean it'll even, you know, things like like mm -hmm. you said, one password, it'll even keep um pass keys. Uh in, oh no, in yeah, it was the first one. In fact, I'm glad you mentioned that. I have there's not a lot of pass keys out there yet, as we all know. I think the password website I I, I look at it daily. I think it maybe has 65 or 68 now. That's all in the whole world. Yep. But they're pretty important sites, you know, like PayPal and, and Microsoft right. And, right. And, and Apple and all of these folks, Google. Uh, but the, the other big thing about passkeys is the big three have truly gotten together in the same gymnasium to play the same game and 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 make their fans happy. They all are trying to make passkeys a good thing. It's not going to happen. People will not adopt to this. Uh, overnight, uh, I have the most I can have right now is maybe 17 or 18. That's all that's available for me. Right. If they were all there, I would have them all. But right. it's so cool because you don't have to worry about anything. You go to a site, you press your little fingerprint to your device, or you have your face look at you, whatever your mode of biometrics is, that's it. You're done. Then you're done. And you're it's in. more secure than a, a, a password that would take 900 years to crack. So it's a good thing if people will just someday uh, uh, adopt it. It's just or to it. I mean, it's going to take a long time. Though. Right. Now, I, I will tell you that I know that getting involved with any kind of a password manager, why do I need a password manager? Why do I why should I trust somebody else to know my birthday right, or right. my pet's yeah, name? It, there's a sense you know, of right or yeah. whatever it is. Right. Um Largely, it's a zero base. It's a zero base knowledge thing. They know nothing of what you're doing. Right. Nothing. Let me let me just say, you know, we need to go and either write or we need to find and recommend uh, a basic security primer like this that's written in real world language uh, for for folks to the you know to see, read, in, and ingest in such a way that it makes sense for them. However. In lieu of that right now, I do want to go ahead and um, uh, uh, point everybody in the direction of the show notes. Um, the one article that we are citing here for this particular part of um, the show is from Apple Insider, and they've and they've got a, a pretty decent write up here on the ones that that they recommend the first one and th the top of their list is the one that i know that that you use larry the one that i use and that's one password but it tells you what it can do and why it doesn't and why it's important that's actually you, number you, two on their yeah. list yeah <laughs> and you know something else chris and, and and i'm gonna i'm gonna say this publicly oh, because that's the way i'm yeah. on the hook for it yeah. i know i owe you a couple of articles right now but a okay. one password thing. I have already done a 60 minute Zoom uh, class. It's already recorded. I've got it in both writing and I got the video. I'll adopt adapt that for the website. That and would it's be awesome. Primer. It's basically, it's a really great primer for why and how to that use would be password manager. Awesome. Yes. So Apple I'll, Apple Keychain is, is probably the best that's I, out there if, if you're I, if you're a Mac user. Um, I, I know I'd like to see something even broader, like I said, that talks about password managers, that talks about pass keys and what it does and, and I'll, how I'll you do it. Yeah, and, and and authenticators. You know, what does that have to how does that play into all of this? Right. You know, 
all those kinds of questions that people are having, because let's face it, they're, everybody's facing these this new layers, these new worlds. The, now everybody's doing 2FA and MFA, and everybody's right. doing password right. managers or password keys. And they don't really understand why they should, and they don't really understand how. How do you get into it? It's, it's, in some ways, it's easier than people think. Okay, but what happens now? i got to move the device. Well, you know, what, you know, those the are the questions they, people have. Yeah, the reason they back away from it once they even have the inclination to do it is because they look and they go, okay, I've got 47 passwords. I have like yeah. 400, but they have 40 or 50. And yeah. they go, oh my God, I got to log into all of these places and change the password. Yeah. Well, now the first time is painful. But after that, yeah. it's easy for the rest of your but, life. But, but, but and some I would say, realize, and I would some say, some people no, don't even realize that's to... what they got to do. That's, that's well, the thing, you know, and then once you do it, it's done. You know, yes, once you do it, it's done. But I would say no, you don't have to go ahead and change them all now. No, I would no, say right. once once you go the next time you either visit that site, absolutely, or the yep. next time that yep, that, that yep, site yep. says, "Hey, it's time to change your password," that's when you bring it into your password vault, if you will. All right, right? right. and then get it in there. Um, until then. I wouldn't worry about it, but start now. Read this article from from Apple Insider. Then go back yeah. after after that confuses you, well, because it's out right now. After that confuses you, wait for Doctor McJunkins. Uh, uh, easy uh, reading, you know, right. easy easy primer on passwords <laughs> and security, <laughs> and that'll go ahead and straighten it all out. Anyway, I want to go ahead now and um, move us to our mobile Linux segment. All right. Um, I know that there's a lot of stuff out there and brother Joel has been, I know, chomping at the bit and has been very quiet. Um, <laughs> it's and, all right. and I want to, and I, I don't mean to single you out, Joel, but I know you've got a lot to offer and this is why, why you're on the show to begin with, but yeah. I want to go ahead and, um, and give you a little bit of airtime here. Um, there, there's and speaking of Apple there, um, and Linux, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. there's, you know, some some Linux developers were able to go ahead, stumble upon a bug in Mac OS. All right. Which actually makes the device unbootable. That's what they're saying. Uh, and and it, it's a really weird kind of bug. But this is a this is a big one. What's what's up with this? Well, apparently there is an issue. Hopefully I didn't drop out there. OK, there it is. No, you're, um, you're, you're, you're there. We <laughs> um, there is an issue. Says all, all the users who upgraded the Sonoma in the normal way have an out of date or even broken system recovery OS. And in particular, MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch owners are vulnerable to ending up with a completely unbootable system. And this has to do with changing the refresh rates away from promotion mm -hmm. which most people using mac os probably don't do that but aside well, Linux, if, you're, if you're a gamer though right if you're a gamer and your and your chosen platform is mac os you may bump into this all right possibility yeah all but right. I, I think it's more more of how they found it in the first place because it's a shy linux does not use uh, or does not support promotion yet. Right. So that's that's the deal with that. Right. So, so, so in order, they if found you're on it, that version of Linux, though, the point is, if you're on that version of Linux or want to use that version of Linux, you've got to change the refresh rate on your monitor. All right. Make sure promotion is enabled. Or at least your internal display, right? Right. Um, which is automatically set to promotion. All right. Mm -hmm. To begin with, um, you've got to set it uh, to something else other than promotion to break it. Yes. In order, well, uh, if the display, all right. So according to them, it's if the display on a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro is configured to a refresh rate other than promotion, that system will no longer be able to boot into older Mac OS. Correct. Um, versions after was it 14 or 14.1? Something um, like that, yeah. Something like that. So you've got to be able to mm. uh, change your refresh rate right, in order to boot the older um, Mac systems or even boot uh, into 
um, a, a, another version of or a version of Linux that yep. may or may not support ProMotion displays. Yep. And I don't get where they say, well, working on a Linux port for the latest version of Mac OS. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be but, that the, that the yeah. uh, company is working on a Linux port of um, a certain piece of software. Because it does, it's it, they, the author. The author over at MacWorld made this uh, sound as though they're taking the operating system and porting the operating system over to Linux, right? Which is not possible, or whatever, right? And, and and it and I don't think that that's the case because I have a feeling, um, right? Tim, Steve Jobs would dig himself out of the hole at this point and lose his mind. <laughs> All right, um, probably people, true. Yeah based on what he said to bill gates about windows right um so th they're probably porting something from uh mac os over to their version of linux um and they bumped into this yep so hmm. could be <clears throat> yeah and again according to um the developers here um it includes recovery mode when those systems are set to the default boot OS and also system recovery, at least until the next subsequent OS upgrade, the, the team says uh, users will not lose any data as a result of this bug, but will need another Mac to recover from uh, the fault since uh, using a device uh, using device firmware upgrade mode. There you yep. go. So that they'll need to use that special mode in order to, to get that other computer back. Um, yep. Most folks are not going to bump into this, but nope. Um, still quirky. Still, still a problem still, if you do. Still, still <laughs> quirky. To uh, me, so to me, it's still early days for the M1 uh, architecture for Linux. Yeah, you know, they're 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 coming along with it, and they're getting closer mm -hmm. and closer. But it's nowhere going to be going to be nowhere near as reliable as it is on Intel, or even uh, <laughs> the next uh, article. <laughs> <Yeah>. So. Um. Yeah, no, oh, yes, yes. And speaking of Raspberry Pi, um, <laughs> apparently, um, and I know this, I know you've ordered one. You said you've ordered one with, you know, yeah, I'm a couple, so couple, waiting couple for of shows two. or so ago. But, yeah, uh, October 1st, I ordered ordered my Raspberry Pi 5. I still do not have it yet. It still not has not shipped from, uh, I bought mine from SparkFun. Uh, right, but I but paid, you didn't have to, you, do, you weren't paying, you know, totally unreasonable prices for this apparently though there are some scalpers out there that are really gouging users where are oh, they at though yes. with some of that joel yeah um ebay uh, <laughs> uh well, no, i'm not not physically but i mean you know how how far are they pushing the prices up well i see the article says 109 percent. i've done some personal research okay. just now it's far worse than that sweet yeah, uh, I just saw a listing here on eBay tonight. Uh, keep in mind that the Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte is $80, 90 with shipping, okay, mm -hmm. from at least from the who I bought. From Raspberry from. Pi, right? Directly uh, from, from Raspberry Pi. Well, they're, they don't they don't sell it. A reseller, yeah. They're, they have resellers. Well, they're 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 reselling parts. Right. Right. And yeah, you can which is you can sort of say you can see me see me see me through the through the the ethers when I do the bunny ears when I say, you know, directly yeah. right 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 so yeah spark fun element 14 uh, aka newark electronics and uh pi maroni uh and uh, several other providers all over the the normal price is 80 dollars mm -hmm. ebay raspberry pi 5 8 gigabyte there is a seller selling them for 179 dollars with free four-day shipping so that's that's <laughs> that's 109 <laughs> no, it's actually much more than that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like uh, two or three times the the amount. Uh, see, well, that's here two Let's, times. That's more than yeah. just, just over two times the amount. Yeah, that's for the uh, eight gigabyte model, which is the one with the most amount of RAM. The one that I think most people should look at, especially if they're just playing with a uh, wanting to look at it as a desktop OS for play or a desktop computer replacement. Um, and, the you know, four gig is 60 and they're selling it for 139.99. This is right as of right now. That's first like off 
if you are the kind of person that's out there buying these things, which are, you know, uh, not shipping to people who've already bought them yet, okay? Right. And you're buying these things to try and make a buck off them, don't. Don't be an ass. Uh, <laughs> I know. No, first, first, first rule, all right, of, of uh, Fight Club is right. don't use your superpowers for evil, right? Yes. Right. Right. Among other things, you know, let let people who actually want to buy these things and use them. Yeah. No, uh, but you know, I mean, but what one of the points of, of Raspberry Pi, one of the original points, selling points was gee, it, it's it's real cost effective. It's real inexpensive. It's still kind of I'm is. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not gonna pay double and triple the price for this stupid no. thing. No. I'm not. I'm going to wait until I can get it at the regular price. I mean, that's yep. that's and you, you know. still can. I mean, they're still up for yeah, pre-order. Absolutely. I mean, you can go to Spark Fun. You can go to Adafruit. Absolutely. Uh, there's a go to raspberrypi.org. You can get the full list. Order it for that price from them. I believe you can probably let me see if uh, Loros has it listed yet. On I guess I don't Amazon. understand why anybody would pay this kind of price for it. Right. I mean, how anxious could you possibly be? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, and, and, and the same thing happens. And the thing that really irks me though is uh, I Google Googled how do you report somebody for price gouging on eBay? Well, yeah, um, and I because I was going to do that, but apparently they took that option away. So oh, I could I could not find it. Really? Um, That's okay. So, but you see the same damn thing with with when the that happened with the. Um, uh, PlayStation Five when it came out, people yeah, were yeah, buying it, and they were yeah. selling them for two or three times the amount. The same thing with any any game system that's come out in the last, um, oh, you know, decade at least. Oh. This you is know, the so, same as ticket scalping, right? I mean, it's the same pretty much principle, and and it, it, and it's, yes, it's exactly. considered illegal in most cases, but okay, yep. So I mean, don't buy your Raspberry Pi Five from eBay. Just don't. Nope. Go, to the one of the I'm, I'm Go to the one of the resellers. Go to the one of the resellers. Sellers, they'll be happy to sell them to you. In fact, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, Evan Upton, has actually even stated that right now their priority is because here's the other thing too with the Raspberry Pi. Another thing that uh, is really taken off with the Raspberry Pi was that they were um, uh, people make like there was companies bringing out devices like I think there's one one of the ones that will monitor power. Uh, usage in your home that you can put yeah. on on your box, and it includes Raspberry Five in in the in the uh, in the kit to do that. So they were buying them oh. and putting them there, which that's fine. But uh, Evan Upton has said that that with the Raspberry Pi currently, they are not selling to bulk resellers or you know to people sure. buying them to stick them in products right now. So um, their priority right now is folks like me who just want to play around with this thing and use it and help sure. put together projects for other folks that, that could use it. Like, for example, um, you can connect this with a SDR, uh, which I we were talking about that in the pre-show. I have one of those and you can you can actually have make a, a radio with the, an honest to God radio with this thing. You know, for one thing, and others, other so much other things that you can do with these things, and I'd much rather people who are actually going to use these things buy them, mm -hmm. and not, you know, people trying right. to make a buck. It just right, now, works me off. You know, so, I I yeah, understand you're right. that you that you're setting yourself up as a reseller, and you've got to you've got to make money and not just resell at the same price because at that point you're not making any money, right? But I, I, dude, dude, you know, 200 percent, there's, there's making money and there's ripping money, ripping people off. Right. That's right. And, and this is when, when, when you're selling something that normally retails for $80 shipped and this came out bigger 160 to $170. Right. All right. And then, um, and this came a bigger practice correcting. right around the time of the chip shortages too. So, yeah. I mean, you know, sure. they, that was happening on all devices, not just not just the Raspberry Pi five. No, I, well, I, remember I, that. Remember all the they, they were, this was happening with graphics boards. Remember all yeah. the numbers oh, yeah. people were getting ripped off with on those on yep. GPUs. Yeah. yeah. One wow. of those things you where know. I wish eBay would actually do something about these people. It's okay to make you know if you're selling something, well, 
and it's oh, still make in your demand. buck. You're entitled to make your buck. But they, I agree. Yeah, but but they get a commission, so maybe they don't want to. I don't know. That's probably no, no. right. Oh, that's but, yeah, but that's that's ethically that's very shady, even even it is. for for them. Well, but All some right. people would argue that at times eBay can be on the edge of things at times. That's yeah, why I, I don't agree. Sell on and, eBay you know, anymore. that is the backbone of capitalism, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, it, it make really your, is make your I money, mean, yeah. right? Y'all, y'all need to get paid. I, I, I get it. But yeah, again, shall we go back to you know the previous story? Thou shalt not use your superpowers for evil. Right. All right. Just saying. Just like the fact they still haven't patched the uh, iOS uh, issues with the crashing iPhones with the uh, Flipper yeah. Zero, but yeah. I digress on that. So <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I get you, and and I agree. Um, they shouldn't be allowed to reset to 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 do that. Yeah. All right. But again, yeah, but there you go. If there's you know, if if there's somebody out there that's willing to pay that, you don't. know, <laughs> yeah, I would I would and, agree and with you're you. Right. Don't, in a pure, but, don't, a, in but in a pure capitalist environment, you could say, yeah, if somebody's willing to pay it, you know, that's pure capitalism. I get it. And, I, well, I do. And, and I, I do honestly get it. Barnum say that there's one born every minute. Well, I mean, right. yeah, I mean, you know, we can't protect everybody from themselves. I get that. But come on, guys, there's there's that. But there's also being sleazy. I, yeah. I, there just is, you know, yeah. and that's and it's not cool. It's just not yep. cool. Nope, nope, nope. All right. So I want to go ahead now and move us to our Windows segment. But before we we get there, I want to take this brief moment and remind everyone that iTechGear.org and the iTechGear Weekly are on Patreon. Patreon is a platform for creators allowing them to express their creative side in, a, in an organized, marketable fashion and earn a living or create for them a somewhat decent side hustle. All right. Uh, you can create a community around your hobby of choice. You can gain followers, um, members and supporters all along the way. Um, you can create subscription based products uh, that for a pledged amount every month you will provide uh, to your members and followers. Setup is easy. Prices are reasonable. And you can have your pledges auto-deposited into an account of your choice every month. With iTechGear.org, our initial offering is a monthly newsletter for just $3 a month. Count them, just $3 a month. Uh, this is our initial offering. And we'll have other tiers and other offers and other uh, digital products uh, in the upcoming months, uh, you can become a patron of our site and help us on our journey. Excuse me. Grow with us and uh, we'll provide you with the tech and understanding that you're missing right now. <clears throat> Join us. Excuse me. All of a sudden, I'm oh my goodness! You 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 just get so excited. Your voice is just gone. <laughs> uh, I'm telling You're you, so this excited. was a big step for us. This was a huge it is. step for us. You know, it getting is. on air, basically, uh, getting out there. That and getting on uh, ZenCast, where we're I mean, available we're all, on yeah, every I think it's about great. every just about every podcasting platform that you could ever want to be on. Yeah, I went out and actually looked at all these, and and this is kind of a cool perspective because they all look different. I mean, it's kind they of do. Cool. yeah, they do, they do. But you know, you can join us over at Patreon at www.patreon.com. That is p a t r e o n dot com slash i tech gear. That's www.patreon.com slash i tech gear. So. I to, and guess what we're going to talk about next? The, we, we yeah. Yes. We're going to talk about Windows some more. We, we, we? we are. We are. Mm -hmm. Again, like this I is said, our value add. This is what we do. This is what we do. Yes. So like I said, www.patreon.com slash iTechGear. Go take a look. If you're if you're liking yeah, absolutely. what you're hearing, this is this is where you're going to help us help you. So help me with this. This is where you're going to Jerry Maguire. Help us help you help you. Yes. we're gonna, You're going to Jerry Maguire that shit, and that's great. <laughs> But speaking of Windows, speaking of um, Windows, and we're know, I, and we I, are now, and we are now. I, I saw something out there that was really kind of cool and really kind of gave gave me all the warm fuzzies that I was looking for after um, after the guy left, right, and and went over to hey. Amazon. 
you know, um, Microsoft is committing to six years worth of firmware updates for a number of different surfaces. Yeah, wasn't that kind of a surprise? Where they went from what four years to six years? Is four what to six. Done now? Yeah, yeah. And the nice thing about this, and I want to make certain that everybody um, knows that uh, Surface devices shipped after January first, twenty twenty one. All right. Now that is two years ago. All right. But 2021 will receive firmware updates for six years. All right. What, now, yeah. now what this, what this kind of, kind of um, uh, means is that uh, things like the, uh, uh, the surface pro five. All right. It's release date was uh, January uh, 15th, 2017. They're going to go to 2024, all right? But something, say, shipped on January 15th, like the Surface Pro 7 Plus, will now get um, firmware updates to January 15th, 2027, all right? And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, and, and maybe I am. You're wrong. This is device. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is devices that shipped after 2021. So even if it was released before then, if they were still shipping in 2021, right? Uh, I believe they're included in the list. That's the way I read it. They are. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So because there's some devices I know of that were released much earlier, right? right. That, because that Surface Pro going. Five, that Surface Pro Five that I mentioned, right? They were still actively yeah. shipping those. Uh, in 2021, January 1st, 2021. Like I said, 2024, it was a release. The original release date of that device was 2017. They're now going mm -hmm. to 2024, which is seven years, right? So, yeah. uh, or six years rather, uh, because they're going actually January from June 15th to January 15th, right? Uh, so it's 2017 to 2024, respectively. So there, there's, there's, you know, and the same thing with the Surface Pro 5 LTE, all right. Started shipping on December 1st, 2017. It's going to get firmware updates now until January 15th, 2024. The level of support, the level, level of uh, security uh, updates and patches and whatnot that will be out there uh, because of this. Because if they're going to get firmware updates, you know for a fact that they're going to get OS I, updates as well. So I will tell you, I will tell you the article that we're linking to in our, yep. in our notes, yep. uh, there's actually some mistakes in the table that they yep. sent. Yep. There are some th dates that are supposed to be 2026, but they're listing them as 2024. Just understand as you read through the list, it starts yep. with the oldest and goes to the newest. And there's some dates they've got wrong. They're typos. I'm pretty sure. Right. But an if example you, you, here, but in the, as an example, you're not, not necessarily of the bad stuff, but the newer stuff, the surface lap, the surface laptop studio two all right yep. shipped october 3rd 2023 it's going to get firmware updates until october 3rd 2029 yep. all right absolutely true that is a huge huge amount of time big, big to deal. be to continue to be supported not only at the os up the uh, uh, uh level but at the device level as well so you know as yep. long as they're getting firmware updates they're going to be compatible with um uh, uh, oh, the operating systems that are released mm -hmm. until at least that end date. So, um, that's so exciting. Your, your I Surface mean, really Pro is. Five is going to go is going to be usable at least until, mm -hmm. um, you know, for for the next <clears throat> couple of months. All right. Anything with a 2024 date, which is the Surface Pro Five up through the Surface Pro Seven, not the Seven Plus, but the Seven. All right. Um, will be getting. Uh, some some updates uh, until about 2024, 2020. Hey, Chris G., do you think uh, Microsoft's decision to do this was based any for any reason because of Google's? They went from like nothing to 10 years with Chrome OS? Um, I think it's also that, you know, yeah, I think there was an, was there an article earlier in the week or, or, or late last week, there was an article about about Google handing Microsoft its lunch on the old, on the lower end products uh, because uh, the Chromebooks were coming out. And I think I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a direct kind of response. It might've been, might've been, well, again, might've it's been one of those coincidental. Things user wins, you know? Right. 
I well, also, and that's, you know, competition's good, guys. You know, let's yep. say, let's face it. Competition is very good. And if it gets somebody to go ahead and react and add I mean, they're, support for they're a gonna device. They're going to support the Service Pro X mm. going forward, which is some of those, you know, they were yeah, the not SQ1, very good selling devices. Right? The, SQ1. In, the SQ1 and the SQ2. They're going to give, yeah, that's pretty exciting. They're going to extend those. Well, the SQ1, out. the SQ1 gets, uh, according to this table, all right, on Windows Central. All right, is going to get support until August 10th, 2025. All right. Correct. Yeah. Six the years. S like the like SQ2. This is where I think the table has a mistake. <laughs> yes. The SQ2 says that the support ends October 13th, 2024. All right. See, I think if you look at the list, they started with 2024s and 2025s. I think, these are supposed to, I think these are supposed to be 2026s. I think somebody did a copy and paste and kind of kind of blew it. Possibly yeah. made it. I think these are supposed to be 2026. I think if you just think of six years from. Yeah, yeah. Was released, I mean, why would you stop the SQ2 before you stop the SQ1? You know, this is, that what I'm make saying. Much this is exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. But uh, I do want to point out that this does not include the Surface Duo or the Surface Duo 2, as they are not I, Surface PCs. They're Surface no. devices, and, technically. And, and the, I also don't see the Surface Pro 6 in the list. That's true. Which I thought is interesting. I don't yeah. know why it's not in the list. Maybe it's just an oversight. I don't know. But uh, don't know don't know um but God. it's very very nice to know that my surface uh pro 9 5g will be some yeah at least until 2028 isn't that something i mean yeah. i mean i think that's excellent and 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 microsoft good on you for doing this yeah i agree i agree so very very pleased with that i wish it went a little bit further back like my six is still a very good machine well yeah, but I'm the six getting OS the, the, <clears throat> but they're covering the five so you would think the six would have been included in here so right. I'm not sure what happened here. I think it's just an oversight because I the agree. six came out later, later than the dates of the five. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused, but okay. It's still plenty fast. I mean, I have no complaints. It's a good machine. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. have no complaints when I, I, I took it um, with me to uh, Virginia. And probably, in fact, I'm probably going to take it with me uh, here in a couple of weeks when I go down to uh, Roanoke. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. it's a lighter mm -hmm. machine. I don't, and I'm, I just want that smaller form factor when I'm traveling. Yep. yep. And Absolutely I right. I don't feel the need to go buy a new one right now. So right. it's, you know, it's absolutely fine. true. Right. You know. So, so yeah. So those are, those will be updated for, you know, six there years. And that's good to hear because you're also going to see OS, like I said, OS updates on those machines. Very uh, exciting. At that point, which is huge. All right. So those, those devices are going to be uh, compatible for quite a while. All right. So there you go. Um, now, speaking of, of support and features, there were some features that were recently deprecated out of um, the latest version of Windows, which commonly called 23H2. Larry, you're familiar with some of those features that were deprecated is is that well, correct? The first thing that hits you in the face with uh, the ones that they deprecated out of the current version is that normally it's a big long list. That's you yeah. know, as technology advances, the big three, all of them deprecate features. Yep. I don't care. It, yeah. It's stuff that they're no longer updating or things that are earmarked for removal down the road soon. And the latest version of Windows 23H2 is no different, except that all we saw. Uh, from the normal telltale signs were three absolutely obscure low-level features. And, and I'm going to bet money that most people will not know what some of these are. One of them, I didn't. Uh, one, of course, computer browser, that's an old antiquated service that and it's associated drivers date all the way back to Windows NT. They've been oh, yeah. included that's, that's forever. Over 20 years. And the only reason they included them up through now was just for backward compatibility. And I don't even know why they did that. Nobody ever used They just left them in place. They forgot right. about them. Right. So they're taking them out. And uh, web client, and AKA most people will know this by web dev service. And that was a set of extensions to the HTTP protocol used in the web that allows users, big deal, to mount folders on a remote Windows PC. whoop de doo It goes back to Windows Vista. It's no longer uh, started by default. It's just in the code. It's It's been superseded by way more modern ways of 
sharing files between PCs on a network. So this is gone, and of course, nobody cares. The third and other last remotely obscure thing I've never heard of, remote mail slots. Uh, wow. It's a dated, they call it a dated, simple, unreliable, I'm reading on this one, insecure uh, inter internet interprocess communications protocol that was first introduced in DOS, believe it or not, and was disabled by the Windows client just now with the preview build 25314 in the right, Canary so that, channel. That's on the Canary channel. That yeah, that thing's build been is on in, there. in the code and dead for years. And it was just... Right. And that, that I think if they woke up and said, oh, we better kill this stuff. It well, does somebody stumbled across it probably and said, oh, holy smokes. They probably didn't. Why are use we the still word doing smokes. this? Yeah. Right. So they honestly, probably didn't use the word smokes. But well, yeah, well, why normally is it still here? these deprecated features are a big deal, especially with Google, because they always take away stuff we like and we use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, there's just nothing to see here, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's yeah. it. So interestingly enough, um, you know, since it does sort of, um, date back to MS DOS and you know more than 20 years because Windows NT or NT stands for new technology, technology. was released in the I want to say mid to late 90s. All right, yep, long time ago. All right, and um, this was first disabled in a, a Windows Insider preview build 25314. Uh, which again is part of the Canary channel or what is assumed to be uh, the channel that's going to bring out a lot of features for Windows 12. All right. Sure. And it was disabled in March of 2023. All right. Um, uh, so there's a, um, a link in the, in the source article that we're linking to that claims it first appeared on Windows NT. So Microsoft's communications clarity hasn't really changed since 1990 blah 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 that's <laughs> yeah. that's right that's frightening frightening that is really frightening so the under it makes me there, wonder what other lines of uh yes. dumb code are in that operating yes, it system really kind of oh, makes I'm sure me it's wonder, a lot you know it, but it really kind of makes me wonder all right if you're saying that your your network communication stack has not changed since i mean really really materially right. changed since yeah. 1996 97 were about where nt was at least out in beta or at least you know or yeah least, um, it might have been in, almost out. 2000 before it really got well, windows out. windows 2000 was actually released in 1999 Right. right, it was so, just before that because I was on the Microsoft right. internal beta team for NT. Right, right. and and, I, and I'll tell you, Windows from a Windows build perspective, Windows two thousand was probably one of the most solid pre Windows yep. seven builds out there. All right, it was it was pretty rock solid and 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 did a a, a doggone good job. And if, if this is out there before then as part of Windows NT, oh my gosh, that's old, yeah. I mean, it's not that it's just so old. It's that the is that the the basis of the underlying uh, architecture for this thing hasn't really for for communications in Windows hasn't changed since 1997 to 1998. That's frightening. It's frightening. And there you go. And that kids. Well, no, <laughs> we're not ending. It's it. frightening. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's frightening. You, you're trying so, to make sure nobody gets sleep tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Well, gonna, you know, if, gonna I have can, nightmares. if I can't, all right, if I'm going to be up till three, four o'clock in the morning, then by God, we're all going to be everybody up. can. Be. <laughs> what ain't happening here. <laughs> so, but let's, yeah. let's try to end this on a, on a good note. And, uh, Chris, do me a favor and talk to us about Snapdragon X Elite. All right. So, there were, it was recently announced, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is all a result of, uh, let's just say, some engineering acquisitions that uh, that uh, Qualcomm made uh, hmm. what, a year or two years ago. They they got some, uh, oh, some of the Apple uh, uh, chip engineers uh, working with them to try to basically for lack of a better description build a competitor sure you know they've been they've been sure. working on it for a while uh those of us who who uh, are familiar with 
Windows on ARM know that it runs, but it's basically running on kind of boosted mobile phone chips. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I mean, I think it's good. I like it. It's gotten better over time, but it, it's a, it's it's not the fastest version of things out there. So they, they got these guys on board. They want to build a better chip. And this is kind of the, the end result of it. And in early benchmarks, it's looking really, really good. I mean, the numbers are really good. Uh, the performance on it is really good. The thing to, to watch when you read these articles that are out there, and there are a variety mm -hmm. of articles out there talking about these benchmarks sure. and sure. comparing we're, and them we're to citing, Apple. And we're citing three different articles here. So Yeah, and there's, and there's way more out there on this, right. on this topic. But right. what's so uh, be very, very careful because they're running them on reference hardware, which means they're not really out on production. Well, machines it's not it's point. not production based based hardware. So right? we don't really know what it looks like. So this is a, a beta world. chip running on beta hardware, effectively. Exactly right. And yeah. so, you know, and they're certainly going to optimize it so it looks good and for the people that they're showing right. so, it to. So hopefully, realistically, it's only going to get better. But 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 having said that. Right. It looks really good. It looks really fast. And why is this important, folks? Because they've been trying to put Windows onto an ARM chip instead of an Intel chip for a long time. Because what you have to remember is about the Intel architecture. It has been around since since basically since the 1990 blah blah blah. <laughs> yep. Way 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 even earlier. You know, it's way yeah, back. Well, then. the 8088, right? And the 8086. Right. The 8080. Uh, around going back we're around further. in 1988 or earlier. So, right? so earlier. So the point is, we're we're the Intel chip architecture that you're using today is still based on those those standards, and so it's it's there are efficiencies that should be there that aren't there. And, right. and haven't been there. It's very power hungry. You'll you'll hear that said a lot. Arm is very less heat power hot. hungry. It's very it's heat very hot. heat. It generates a lot of heat. A lot. There's of a heat. lot of a lot of challenges with with what they've done. So right. The idea of going to arm is that it's it's more efficient. I mean, you, you could argue there's pluses and minuses to it. Right. But the, the short form is it's more energy efficient per per watt than than Intel chips today. Well, it, and it's, so it's more powerful. Is, and what that relates to yeah. is, is there's more power per 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 oh, wow. gigawatt per gigawatt. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For your one point twenty one gigawatts of power, then then um, then you're going to see. What was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, in other chips. Right. And that's and that's serious. You're going to get more power, more bang for your buck. All right. Your Absolutely battery true. is going to last. Your battery life is going to last longer. You're still going to have the and, same computing power, but with longer battery life. And the newer ARM chips come with, you know, uh, neural processors built in. So that will support mm -hmm. some of these AI functions going forward. Exactly. Uh, better. Exactly. All that stuff is kind of built in. So there's a lot of efficiencies. And Apple showed us that it could be done when they released the M1 series. And they, they basically took their phone, they took their phone chip and, and did a bunch of crap to it and made, made the M series. And yes. here you go. Right. And, and everybody was really excited. And for a while, at least in a performance perspective, the PC world was left in the dust, and the only way that, that Intel could compete was by shoving an i9 with lots of lots of cores in in it, and it generated insane amounts of heat insane and drew amount. insane amounts of power. It just really drew a lot of power to make it work. So they've never been able to really make it efficient. They could make it more powerful, but they couldn't make it nearly as efficient. Agreed. So, and this and this is a problem. All right, this is a problem because no, especially you're going to be forward. sucking on that power cord a lot more. All right, mm -hmm. on an i9. All right, then on any or, or 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 on the Intel platform, then you will on an Apple M M uh, MX platform, or even this uh, Snapdragon, or even the Qualcomm chips that are out so, there for so the this Surface Qualcomm devices chip, so, that are available. So this this Snapdragon, you know, Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, X Elite. The whole notion is, it looks like it might be the first computer based ARM chip, right? that is not coming from Apple that might actually have the possibility to compete with Apple in terms right. of its performance and in terms of its efficiency. And so mm -hmm. this is a big deal. This has been a holy grail they've been kind of working toward for a long time. And if it's successful in the real world, you're going to see, I can guarantee you, you will see uh, Windows migrating to ARM over the next few years. Right. If, if, this, I, is, I, if this is successful. Right. And I want to, I want to say a couple of things here. Number one, um, the Windows RT machines that were released mm -hmm. a while back when, back with Windows 8 and Windows oh, yeah. 8 1, all right, 
uh, the Windows well, RT, RT, RT devices, was even before, the specific RT. Was RT. Before yeah, RT was before that. Well, yeah. sure. I mean, but, but we're talking, we're talking Windows that RT. interface. We're talking that interface. Yeah, we are. And back in, in that time, which is about 10 years ago, that was based, that was an ARM-based chip. That was an right? ARM-based chip. And, and the was, reason it why- was slow. And, but yes, it, was it, it, it was slow. But the point that I'm making here is the reason why that tanked is because everybody, nobody really knew it was an ARM based chip. And why can't I install the software that I download for Windows uh, um, or the, the software that I've downloaded from this site that's a Windows compatible app? Why won't it run on this chip? All right. Why won't it yep. run on this Windows RT machine? I need to have this thing. And, and it's again, because. People didn't understand. People couldn't accept it, and that's why that tank. But and, and and we've gotten to the point now where if you use the Surface Pro Nine Five G or one of these other current generation ones, they're running on. They're usually running on uh, what Snapdragon Eight, uh, what second Gen series, two. third series, whatever. Two, yeah. two G two, right? B twos. And and the point is, they're they're not bad. I mean, they're really they no, run very no. similar. No, and, and, and they will run, and they will run um, uh, uh, Intel based and. Uh, I was just going to say that was that was so they run about the performance level of an i5 and they will run not only ARM based applications, but the older x84, x86 and x64 Intel based apps. Yep. They do it in an emulation and they do it pretty well. There's they do. There's, and you don't know, only, really, you can't tell the difference yeah. when they're actually because you and I both have have we do um, uh, ARM based chips that run Microsoft Windows and um on the Surface Pro 9 5G that I've got, I mean, you cannot tell, you know, which no. one is which. All right. No, you have to look in the task manager to see what, you what do. what's running. You do. And, and it's pretty good. I mean, you, there are some apps that are better than others. It's absolutely true. And there's some, there's a few things out there that don't run. Uh, but I really, really think that, that, and that's mostly about a compatibility issue. Somebody didn't write the right drivers. Right. Somebody didn't provide, you know, there's, there's some other special requirements. But for right. the vast majority of people, you wouldn't know the difference. If I put I gotta, one in front I of you, you wouldn't know. For, question for both of you from a kind of like a, I mean, I don't use an arm. I don't use Windows on ARM, so I can't, I mean, this is not necessarily a question for sure. me, but I, I can see it being a question for a lot of people. Why should Joe Blow, average user, email and web, buy an ARM computer for Windows when A, it's going to cost a little bit more, and B, admittedly, it probably will, there might be an app or two in the background that won't run. So what is the big advantage well, point? Well, first, first of all, the thing, the, the software that's out there won't, that will not run may be system-based utilities that most of those folks are never going to run. They, they're, they're never going to run. They're never going to run, number one. It. All right. Number two, the the answer to why, and this is at least from my perspective. All right. If you are the kind of individual that is going to be out and about, say you're a college student. All right. And you're running from class to class all over campus and you don't necessarily have time to plug into either a wall or the the battery pack that you're sporting right now won't or can't or won't power a computer. A ARM-based computer is going to last you probably four to six hours longer than your than the equally powered uh, Intel-based. Okay, enough said. That's yeah. and the that's that is the biggest yeah. and, reason. And and it, it, like he said, it's going to draw less power. If you're somebody who cares about green issues, this is a big deal. Of course, if you're somebody who doesn't care about it, you're going to care about the longevity of it. Yeah. Um, and in addition to that. Um, it's a goal. It allows for thinner reference design machines, yes. smaller and thinner. It also allows for the fact that you don't have to generally have a fan involved yes. in the computer. So those kinds of things are, are big deals, you know, especially so, when you're, when you're uh, uh, either, you know, a, a junior or a senior and you're running all over campus and you don't have time to go to, you know, to, to sit true. in this one spot in the quad or in the, in the student and, union. And and plug in and charge in between classes. It's and they, last... they typically also have the five G built in, so that's a big deal for yes. some folks as well. You know, you have the, the radio able, built in for cellular. You're going to be able to get on the internet with that device. And, and no yes, folks, it works. It does. <laughs> it actually it does, does work. I've done I it. use it. I've yep, done I it, use it, and it really and it works well. Yep. All right, especially yep. if if it's uh, on a five G carrier in your area 
that's got good service and good throughput. And that's something right? that the that Apple is not doing with the M1 series at this point. Which so, doesn't make s- well well they no. are to an, they are to an extent on on their iPads. All right. A on their iPads, di- you're, right. They do. you're right. You're right. Different can, animal though. Cuz they they are yes, but but same chip. All right. True. Very true. Right. Their MX chips are also powering their iPads now. But However, but, but, but this they is aren't doing the it chip. on their MacBooks. Not, right. They aren't doing it on their MacBooks, yeah. which I think is, um, is a a. Um, I think it's an area mistake. that they need they, to get they should into. Throw it in there. It's an, yeah. it's, an it, it's it's something that you know we could do with an eSIM. So it keeps a, it keeps them competitive. Yeah, it keeps them competitive because what's happening, and I think that the important thing that's happening is they're getting to the point where they can't keep shoving. CPUs into the Intel cores and making them bigger and bigger because they're drawing more and more power. They're getting hotter and hotter, getting harder to cool them down, all those kinds of things. So yeah. you know, yeah. there you go. That, so that's all the reasons, reasons we have to move Those to are that. your reasons why. All right. And that, kids, effectively is the show. And I want to go ahead now and move us to our pick of the week segment. But before I do that, I want to take a quick moment uh, to let our listeners know that our Show picks are typically hardware, software, and other items of interest that we have individually purchased and actually use. Uh, These are things that we like enough that we want to recommend them to you, our growing listener base. Um, uh, These are not paid advertisements or, or items for which we have any kind of affiliated marketing relationship with. If they were the, or the uh, editorial policy over at itechyear.org, uh, would indicate that we have to uh, notate or at least tell you about that up front. These are things that we sincerely believe in, and we want to bring them to you at the end of each show. Why? Because we like you. We do. www.patreon.com. Patreon.com. Yeah, I knew you were going. <laughs> I heard that. I heard it coming before it ever came. <laughs> hey, hey, you know. Right now, I gotta stand on the street corner. <laughs> That's right. Things are I see you with the tin cup. Slim. Um, I see you poor. with the tin cup. You know, I get it. <laughs> yes, and you're gonna keep on driving. <laughs> and you're gonna keep on driving. Don't Anyways. roll the window down, Martha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> roll them up. Roll them up. Roll, roll, them, up. roll them up, kids. Oh, All gosh. right. So this week, this week, I've got the pick, and I and I want to. This is going to be something that I think will be of interest, at least to Joel among the among the four. I've <laughs> seen it, Joel, because because this is something that I have found at least that um, I was I like a metal case. I like a a bigger case on my wrist, and I also like a metal band. And I, I I went and I bought one for my Pixel Watch, but it's it made the Pixel Watch look kind of weird in that it was too small. All right, uh, I think the watch is too small to begin with, but that's neither here nor there. Um, it made it a little too small, and it, and and it didn't have the 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 presence that I wanted to have. I wanted the watch to have. All right, so if you're looking for something a little bit different, this week's pick is the uh, Mio HHR compatible for Google Pixel Watch uh, band metal stainless steel case with rich wristband strap for Pixel Watch 2022 men women. In other words, this is a uh, it's a really, really nice uh, case that you can just go ahead and uh, pop the bands off of your Pixel Watch and then insert the Pixel Watch in and of itself two all right uh and and it supports pixel watch one and pixel watch two and um comes in a variety of colors and they're 36 dollars 35.99 so yeah oh there Um, you go so there you go and it really it's really classed classed up the pixel watch it really looks good in this and I, you know, I was looking for something and looking for something when Joel was recommending his band, and I'm like, hmm, you know, I like, I like that 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 mesh steel band that Joel right. got, but I want something, uh, you know, to give a little bit more. And there it is, and it doesn't take away from the screen. You see the entire screen because it's got that large bezel, if you will. Um, 
What it, about it, touch, like the real... touch sensitivity? Does it affect it, that at all? No, it does not affect it because there's no cover over mm. the top of it. All okay. right. It is the actual um, uh, a watch crystal that pops through. All right. So it, it it's actually not bad. And it, it's it's not quite as 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 the as the main picture here on the Amazon page that we are citing. However, it's very close. All right. It's very, very close. Uh, the only problem that I see with this is you got to make certain that the thing is inserted in there as deep as it can go and as tight as it can go, because the um, the um, crown for this uh, it doesn't necessarily come out far enough. All right, yeah. so you, you've got to watch that. Anyway, other than that, 36 bucks. This is really nice. I like this a lot. So there you go. And you got the silver one, huh? I did get the silver one. Yeah. So so with that gold, gold with the gold inlay around the around the, the inside and outside of the bezel. Yeah, the gold one's real pretentious looking. I wouldn't like that. <laughs> no, no, no. But but something other than black or other than straight silver, I went with the um with the silver and gold, and it's right. it, it really looks nice. I will say mm. this about the one that I have is that I have to be real careful putting it on my wrist mm -hmm. because I have to completely remove the band from one side of the band from the other side of the band. So mm -hmm. um other than that, I like I've it's been a good good band for me. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this one looks looks nice. It's not really so. I don't think it'd be something I would prefer. But if somebody yep. else out there in the listening land, right, this is for you. Probably right. not and for it, me. It does yeah. come with uh, currently. There's a five dollar coupon that's offered with this, which brings the price down to thirty uh thirty dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, and it does come with. Uh, the appropriate uh, watch band sizing tools, so so you can go ahead and size it yourself at home, and it's pretty easy to do. So, but that's it. That's it. This the the uh, Mio HHR compatible um, Google Metal uh, Google Pixel watch band. So not bad. And that well, kids is the show. This has been the iTech Gear Weekly episode number sixty six. Execute. Episode 66, recorded live Sunday, November 5th, 2023. As I said, I am Christopher Sparrow, and for Dr. Mr. Larry McJunkin, uh, Brother Joe McLaughlin, and Mr. Chris Gavula, I want to say we will see you next time. <laughs>